Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP in SharePoint. In today's video, we are going to discuss about how we can use Office Web Fabric React Combo Box Control. So I will show you how we can use single selection, how we can use multi selection. Basically, we are going to see or we are going to create something like this where uh, if user want to select a single item from the combo box they can select it and also if the user wants they can select multiple items not only this we will see also how we can use pnp to save these items or whatever the user select to a list so i have created a list and another important thing that we are going to do here is um, the items or you can see here these are the six uh, five items which are there this is coming from the uh, choice field which we have in the list so let me uh, first of all let me uh, run this application i have already created a demo let me just run it and then i'll show you how exactly it is happening and then we will create from the beginning so i will open uh, the node.js uh, or the command prompt uh, i will open the golf serve here so that we can open it locally and once we open it i will open uh, the sharepoint workbench so i will just copy this url uh, this is my sharepoint workbench here and if you will click over here you can see the web part name is fabric ui combo box so i'll go here i will just just search for fabric and you can see here fabric ui combo box and when it is loading you can see here there are uh, three items it is loading so you can select anything and then here here you have multiple things let's say i selected these four items and then i'll click on submit then the item got submitted successfully behind the scene there is a list is there so if you will see here this is the list um, you can look at this the last item that we have added now here uh, you can see these four items has been selected and uh, this if i'll just expand this these are the two uh, choice fields so if you'll select it uh, column settings edit column then you will be able to see here uh, there are uh, three items are there power ops power bi power automate and if i'll add something let's say spfx uh, you can see here and i will just save this item now you can and same way if you'll see here i have uh, the column settings for the multi multi value and here we have this many items so uh, the form that we have created so if i'll just refresh once again uh, you will be able to see here now spfx should be there uh, you can see here let me just change it little bit so if you will actually look at this uh, column uh, this one we didn't write it properly so let me do spfx and uh, then click over save so now you can see here spfx is there let me change just uh, once again just check it so you can see here now we have spfx let me refresh this now we should be able to see spfx rather than the choice for uh, so you can see here now it is spfx is coming the reason i wanted to show this is because um, I wanted to show you that these values we are reading from the column choices uh, rather than hard coding or binding something some default values so it will be dynamic every time you will add something over here uh, in this uh, uh, list column values then uh, those changes will be reflected here so this is what is we are going to see here now let me stop it here so I'll just stop it and i will go back to a uh, one more folder so basically spfx is the folder where our demo is there all these demos so we'll create a uh, application from the beginning and uh, i just want to tell you that we have used here uh, pnp to save the data to the particular sharepoint list so here i will create first one folder so i will say fabric um, combo demo and uh, i will say cd fabric combo demo and then here i will run this your microsoft slash sharepoint you can see here and uh, now what it will do is it will ask us a couple of things uh, related to the uh, web part name and web part description all these things it will ask us you can see here the solution name 
let it be this one we are targeting SharePoint online latest and then we'll use the current folder so you can see here we don't want to deploy the solution everywhere uh, and then you have no so basically both these things we can just select no and then here we are creating a web part so i'll select web part and what is the web part name here so i will say let's say fabric uh, combo uh, wp i'll just give it like this and then here it is the description and we will use here uh, react so you can see here i have selected react option you can just use your uh, keyboard arrow and then you can select option and then click on enter so once you click on enter it will now create our entire uh, project so basically it will take some time to create everything and uh, meanwhile if you are interested for sharepoint training i have a complete sharepoint training courses where uh, there are more than 20, 25 hours of videos are there solutions are there uh, and also pdf documents are have attached whenever is required and i also keep on uh, adding um, future updates regularly and you can see here all these uh, things you can get it from this url so there are 10 modules are there and it is the complete thing you can check this and if you are interested you can enroll for this so now let us check uh, where we are on this okay it will take some time so i'll come back so you can see here now uh, the project got created the last thing that we'll install is the pnp one so i will we will just write it here npm i and then at the rate pnp slash sp because this uh, we'll use to connect to the sharepoint site basically to insert or uh, whatever the operation that we will do for the list in this particular example how we'll save the data that we are using here so you can click over here and it will you can see uh, now it will take some time to install it so this is almost done now what i'll do is uh, we will open this this solution using visual studio code so just type code space dot and then it will open on visual studio code so now if you look at this uh, by default there will be source web parts and then components you will have this component here you can see and uh, this is the web part file you can see here dot ts file so what i'll do now is i'll open the existing solution which i have i don't want to make this video so big um, so i'll explain the code from there and then uh, also i have written a complete article for the same where you can get uh, the source code so you can basically download even the project and you can run it so let me just open the solution here so if you look at this uh, this is my uh, solution here this is the existing solution which we run at the beginning and we saw the output so in this case first one if you'll see here in this particular uh, uh, in this particular example is uh, uh, at the beginning we are binding this values so basically we are getting the values for from the uh, list uh, whatever the choices it has for this particular columns um, in this case if i'll if i'll just show you um, now this values we are binding at the when the this is loading um, so both the things and these values are coming from uh, this two uh, check boxes uh, two choice columns so now uh, what i'm done here is uh, if you'll just open the props.ts file uh, we declare two things here of type any single value choices and multi value choices and then the, then the when uh, on the web part you can see here um, I have uh, written this one where uh, we are getting the single choices from uh, this method get choice field method in fact both the things are coming from this particular uh, method and we are passing two things one is the uh, page context dot web dot absolute url which will give you the site url and the other one is the column name so you can see here and if you look at this method get choice fields uh, and you can see here the web, uh, web url and the field uh, so we are using here um, this is the list name so get by title then fields filter um, entity property name equals to the field name you can see here and this way you will be able to get the value so this is the rest code you can see and uh, i have declared one array here uh, uh, a result array and uh, whatever the result it will uh, whatever the values it will be there you can see here we are adding to this array uh, by using the key value pair you can see this and then this will return the uh, result array 
So next what we are doing, so that means here uh, now this single choice values, whatever the values are there in this column, it will be there and then this one will be, it will be there as well. So um, next what we are, what we have to do is in the .tsx file, this is the main file, you can see here first thing is we are importing the uh, controls here. So in this case we are using combo box. So on a button also is there. So you can see um, uh, we are importing it from Office UI Fabric React library slash index. And then this, these are the things which we are using uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, to work with uh, the list list items. And the last one you will see here uh, we are uh, just getting a GUID. So the title basically we are uh, inserting as the GUID column because this is a mandatory column so if you look at this list right so the first one is a GUID column and the other one has the values so um, if you look at this this is the GUID column and uh, the controls you can see here if you go to the render method uh, this is the controls that we are using uh, combo box and then here you can see here this one is the com combo box and then here multi select is there uh, the first one is a single selection so this one is for multi selection uh, both the things has been auto complete is on so you can just type something and it will show you um, the the corresponding values and two things are there if you'll see here this dot props dot single value choices so when you will do this because props has the values so it will render it with the values here so the options for this combo box is whatever we got it from uh, the by calling that um, uh, rest URL and it will be there so it will be binding the options are binding here and on change uh, this thought on combo box change this is basically a method uh, where we will get the values and then finally there is a button on click then the this thought save this a method is also there now first we'll see the on combo change so if you'll see here on on combo change combo box change uh, for single one it is nothing but just the state we are uh, single selection so single select and uh, whatever the key is there we are adding it and then second one is for multi select you can see here on combo box multi change so in this case again you can see here there is an array dot push so whatever the items are selected it will add everything uh, and then finally the, this will be the set state uh, so when, once you will do the set state so whatever the selection will be there it will the, the UI basically will be rendered and uh, next the last one is the save so you can see here on the save uh, uh, this uh, we are getting the web url then web dot list dot get by title and we have the single uh, value and then multi value so whatever this is there on single select and then uh, for multi select uh, everything is coming to the results and then uh, we are adding it so basically then the value will be added so items dot add you can see here this is the beauty of pnp that uh, you don't need to really to write a lot of code so you can see here this many code and it will save the items to that particular list so and also in the concert uh, constructor you can see here the this dot state is empty first one multi select also it is an array so it is also an empty so this is basically when you load nothing will be selected so that's the reason we are doing this uh, so by default this will be the state um, and uh, the so once you have this this thing ready then what we can do here is you can run the uh, local workbench so if you will go here I will just go back to the other project here so I will simply go to the other project so I'll go to cd dot dot and then here the folder name is uh, cd uh, one second so I just copied the folder name so you can see here and here you can run the Gulp surf. So once you run the Gulp surf, as I display, I, as I have shown in the beginning, so it will open the local workbench. But you can even open the SharePoint workbench, and uh, while it is running, you you can be able to uh, add the item. So you can see here now, the item the web part is already there. Even if you want to add it, uh, just search for fabric, whatever the uh, your web part name. Now you can see here it is coming, and then. It will select and save it will be saved now this is what locally you can test it but if you want to deploy it uh, then there are certain commands are there which will uh, uh, which you have to uh, uh, which you have to run it so that it will create the dot spp kg file which is the package file and uh, you can deploy that into your either to your tenant level app catalog or site collection level app catalog wherever you want to 
upload you can upload it so basically these are the two commands uh, if you will uh, um, if you will run it then it will uh, create the package so the package will be created under sharepoint and you can see here this is the dot kg file so this one you can take it and put into your app catalog and lot of time uh, people also prefer to put in the site, site collection app catalog i have a separate video where i have uh, explained how you can enable the site collection app catalog so that you can put your uh, all your um, specific apps right which is for the particular site collection you can put into that one so these are the commands i'll put these commands anyway you'll get everything from the sharepoint uh, uh, from, from the blog post actually where I have, uh, I'll, I'll put everything code, solution, and then you just need to run uh, the npm i because the solution will not contain the load node modules. So you just need to run these four commands. I'll put in the uh, uh, blog post also. Now, if you want similar kind of videos, then uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you will get a lot of free videos on SharePoint, Office 365, Power Platform, SPFX. All these videos, you will get it free. And I frequently upload videos uh, related to these technologies. Thank you and have a nice day.